There's many things that we expect our local schools to do. Our schools educate, they inspire, they afford opportunity, they're the hearts of any community and they are our future. That's why our state and local unions of educators have teamed up to bring this conversation of school accountability to you tonight. We're not um, putting on exhibit what our teachers are doing well enough in the community. We're not communicating well enough. We're in a technology age and to continue to hold our children back with old ways of teaching you know, I think would be very detrimental in doing them an injustice going into this, this world that they're, you know, being um, shaped for. One of the things that we're having a challenge with is the equity issue because all kids do not have access to these things at home and we're trying to create situations where they have access to everything that they need and we don't want to leave anybody behind and we're trying really hard to bridge that gap. We don't want to cut anything we're doing because it's amazing and it's wonderful and, and it's exactly what we need to be doing. But we've got to find ways, and funding's a huge issue, but we've got to find ways so that every kid has a chance to be able to do that at home and to learn that and to be able to polish those skills and not feel left out or left behind. A parent can't get them out of bed in the morning, but I'm still the one whose grade is you know, in the classroom is going to show up as an F. So how can I possibly uh, alter the outcome of that? You, you can't expect a human being, no matter how intelligent, compassionate, patient, skilled, creative, you cannot expect one individual to cope with what our teachers are being asked to cope with now in terms of class size. In the university, you get taught possibly how to deal with one behavior you know, issue in the classroom, but now that I'm student teaching, you might have five in a classroom and you're over your head and what do I do with these kids? You're not really taught with how to handle the management of the classroom necessarily, it's more the content. They want you to get that content down. Understandably, you know, we're very educated in this content areas, music, art, elementary and physical education in general. We're very educated in these content areas, except when we get to the management part, it's really a struggle to get through that part. Well, I certainly agree with inclusion, and that's what we push, push, push for, and I'm the, one of the biggest advocates for that. We're not, we're not giving the right, I don't think we're giving the right supports to make that happen as successfully as we could. It is so difficult. It is incredibly difficult with all the levels of students, the learners, the learning styles, to have 28 of them and one of me, no A's, all day long. It's, it's demanding, it's exhausting. I'm not, I'm not doing as much as I could. The, the difference in my teaching style this year with 28 students is so incredibly changed than when I had 20 students. It's unbelievable, second grade. I think if we can make it easier for parents to get involved and to be aware, we're going to have more engagement, we're going to have more fulfillment out in the community. People will be more involved in the decision making in a meaningful way by going out and voting and having a say in where our funding comes from and where it goes to. And we'll be in less pinched situations like this. We'll be able to have more and do more with it if we get everybody involved. I'm getting tired of the teacher bashing. I'm getting very tired of the negativity. We are not public enemy number one, and I'd like to see that uh, being changed.